to Union Baptist Church. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for this day, yes. a day we've never seen before and will never see again. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Yes. Been so good and so kind to sinners like us, watching over us all night long. Yes. And to them, he wants to just give him all the glory, all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, the darling son who we sent, who died on the cross. You know, come on with me as we sing a good old one, this joy that I have. And we're going to go to our prayer and then another selection. Amen. 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 This joy that I have is the world that give it to me. Lord, because you are able to do everything but fail. 
then Lord we ask you to bless Union Baptist Church this morning and send your Holy Spirit into this place let us come and tarry with us bless us as we preach the word bless us Lord as we speak in the tongues of your wonderful angels Lord as we sing hallelujah to you Lord and give you all the praise and the glory for we know Lord that when we send those praises up the blessings come down and we thank you Lord for this day what a mighty day it is Lord and for this Lord again we want to say thank you so our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name oh Lord your name is above all names and we're going to call on it Lord because you sent your darling son Jesus who died on the cross for us bless this church today bless all the churches having service all over this world all over this country, all over these cities, Lord, who are serving you, Lord. And bless each and every one of us gathered in these seats here at Union Baptist Church today, Lord. For we have pains and aches like everybody else. We have troubles and sorrows like everyone else. But Lord, we're asking you to send a miracle right here today, Lord. And help us, Lord, to do the things we need to do. We know you can do it, Lord. Bless us and keep us is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Let us all say, Amen. Amen and amen. amen. We now have a selection. Way back again, the Bible days of Lord told the people that it's gone to rain. And when they tell them, they paid a no mind. It's gonna rain, it's gonna rain, you better get ready and balance in mind. I said, I got you know what the rainbow sign is said it won't be water, but fire next time.
Thank you, deacons, for singing out the It's Gonna Rain. Amen. That's our Men's Day chorus. Amen. We've been singing that for a long time. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Luke, 23rd chapter. Put your finger on verse number 32. And the title of this sermon is, Can You Say Ouch? Can you say ouch? You know how ouch? That hurt. <laughs> and the reading is as follows. Luke chapter 23. I invite all of you here. I solicit your prayers. Prayers of the living and those gone on beyond. someone and lift them up and be a blessing to them. Luke chapter 23 verse 32 and it reads and there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death and when they were coming to the place which is called Calvary there they crucified and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, most for God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for all you do. But most of all, we give this wonderful sermon to all of those, Lord, listening, and we ask you to bless it. And bless us, Lord, so that we'll learn something along the way and be better than we were before because we studied your word. Bless us and keep us as our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. And they all said, Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We thank all of you who are, went to our food pantry this morning and all of you who are here gathered. We ask you to always bless one another and do your part by praying for one another. Amen. Yeah. For those here in the church, those who couldn't make it, and those in audiovisual land, all those who are here. But most of all, pray for yourself. No better person in the world than you to pray for you. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Wonderful thing. Yes, touch yourself on the top, put a cross on your head, and say, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, bless me today. Yes. Lift me up past all hurt, harm, and danger. Watch over me. Help me. And most of all, Lord, help me to help somebody else along yes. the way. Yes, lift you past all your sickness, all your problems and sorrows, because we all got them. Yeah. They come <laughs> sometimes quicker than we'd like. Yeah. Mm, and then when they come, <laughs> we get that title. <laughs> Why I said, can you say ouch? Because yeah. it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It we, we smile on our faces, but it hurts. Yeah. In reality, you may think you sometimes know a person. But the real character and qualities begin to surface under pressure or hardship. That's when you know if it's a true person of God. Listen, some people are just the nicest Christians <laughs> you've ever been around. And the minute some trial comes their way, they lose it. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> It's, it's easy to show belief to God and stand in faith when everything is going away. Oh, come on, somebody. But when some trials come our way, can we still stand in faith and say, thank you, Lord. I, I've known many uh, Christians <laughs> whose steadfast faith failed them. And they stopped coming to church. 
It's called spiritual maturity. Some folks are just not spiritually mature yet. Because they go through trials, tribulations, and, and then they give up on God. But that's when, oh, that's when God is right there with you at his strongest when you're at your weakest. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we begin to panic and retreat a little bit when things go wrong, or, or sometimes a lot. And then and, and, and we say, where is God? But whether you know it or not, if you're asking the question, where is God, he's holding you. Because if he wasn't, you'd be dead. Standing before him talking about, can I get on in? But if he's got you by the palm of his hand, each and every day watching over you, even though you slip and fall, even though it gets rough, and sometimes you got to say, ouch, <laughs> he's got you. He's not going to let you down. But listen, listen. I want us to look at two people today. Both criminals. Uh, we were talking about that a little earlier. Yeah. But end up with very different encounters with Jesus. I don't know about you, but crime is still rising. People are still struggling. Yeah. And when folks struggle, they will steal your money, anybody's, and sometimes they will hurt you in the process. Yeah. But some are lifelong criminals. <laughs> Since they were little children. Have you ever seen somebody like that? Yeah. <laughs> lifelong criminals. Yeah. Well, guess what? When we look at these two, when Jesus is in our midst, we see, we tend to make excuses. But when we look at these two, we reach out to them and make it an uh, 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 understanding that these are two men who are criminals most of their life. Yeah. And because of this, it is met <laughs> the time of their end. They are at their demise. Could you imagine that doing wrong and evil all of your life and then finally you get caught? Ouch. We make excuses for why things are like they are. Don't we sometimes? I'm not going to talk uh, uh, and blame these men for what happened, but, but we all make excuses. Hmm? When we look back and say, nobody was there to help me. You know that one? Yeah. Uh, uh, I couldn't do it by myself, so I had to do it the best way I could. Yeah. I, 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 I started down that road of stealing because it was easy. Then I kept on doing it, con artists. Uh, I kept on being a thief. I kept on being a liar. I kept on being a cheat. I kept on being uh, uh, the person nobody wanted around. When they came uh, uh, and they looked around and they knew that if I came in the room, they'd have to watch everything they had. But guess what? They just got caught. Now, now let, let, let me bring this home to you. Let me bring this home to you. <laughs> we all are criminals somewhere along the line. Some of us have stole something somewhere. You are not the perfect angel that you sit up here to be. You are not <laughs> above the excuses. We have all been criminals from time to time, pastor included. We have all stole something or done something that we shouldn't have done. We have all been in places that we shouldn't have been. So, so the thing is, you just didn't get caught. If we got what we deserve, oh, come on, somebody. If we got what we deserved, we would all be standing in a jail cell somewhere, probably. But we just didn't get caught. Yeah. Or some of us just didn't get in enough trouble yeah. <laughs> that it didn't get exposed. Yeah. Because this media and the way things are nowadays, they want to expose everybody for everything. You do one thing wrong. And you are 
toast. You are looked at like you are the worst thing in the world. But when they are pointing the finger, you see what's pointing back at you? One, two, three, four. Because if I take the onus off of me, <laughs> you won't be looking at me. I can put it on that person because if you look behind my closet door, you'd say, oh my goodness, this person is worse than the person we, we try to prosecute. Well, Lord Jesus. So here we are, all of us. Sinners. All of us messed up, all of us problematic, all of us in trouble somewhere. Jesus is standing there in the middle of this cross. See, because we, we always look at the cross. We, we look at the cross. We look at the cross. But on the right hand and on the left hand were two criminals, two sinners. And guess what? When they first started, they were up there, it tells us. They were now in the presence of the Lord, hanging on the cross. The cross of repentance. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. Many seem to believe that the one criminal was bad and the other was good because one rebelled against Jesus while the other repented. However, if you read the book of Mark, Mark hints that when the crucifixion began, both criminals were hurling insults at Jesus. Ah, this, this is how this works. Sometimes you could be in the wrong crowd. And when you're in the wrong crowd, you don't care what you say to anybody because you want to be in the in crowd. Huh? You, you'll start saying things to people, oh, oh, uh, 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 yeah, get them, get mess them up, oh, they ain't no good, oh, because you just want to be accepted yourself. Yeah. And all of a sudden, both the criminals, yeah, 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 because they're thinking they're going to get down. No, 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 no. Then this one, we're going to call the one on the left, starts thinking about it. They're not taking me down from here. They said that these men were criminals, murderers. They were, they were bad boys. I'm not. <laughs> come on in the story. Listen to this story. These boys were bad dudes. And the cross of repentance is a reminder that it only takes an instance for the human heart to be softened and a soul to turn toward Christ. Here they are. Both of them on this cross. And this is what I want to say to you. It, it, it hurts. It's ouch. Ouch is hurt. Yeah. Mentally, physically, spiritually. Yeah. And then here they are getting ready to die. Ouch. So hard. Do y'all see this picture? And they are now with one of the most famous men of the time. This is Jesus. Oh, come on with me. Come on, let's understand this with me. Jesus, who raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, fed 5,000 plus the women and the children. Huh? This Jesus healed leprosy. This Jesus healed everybody who came to him. This Jesus, huh, the woman with the issue of blood will chase him down. This Jesus, I told you this last week, he raised three people from the dead. This Jesus was famous. And then all of a sudden, one of the criminals says, wait a minute, this man didn't even deserve to be up here. I deserved this, but he didn't. He comes to a realization like we all do. Come on, this is the ouch part. Yeah. We all got to realize that we got to leave this place. Yeah. I don't want to die. You want to die? No. But they're hanging up here on the cross, and one of them is still hard 
hard neck, hard uh, in his heart. Then he, I don't care. Get me down. I don't, this is what's interesting to me about this whole scenario. When he talks to Jesus, he doesn't ask to get taken down. Because I'm quite sure Jesus could have said to somebody, heal and take it down. Think about it. This is Jesus. This is the miracle worker. He didn't ask that. He didn't ask, could I see my mom again? He didn't ask, could I see dad again? He didn't ask for her to be a, a, a place high or low. No, he didn't. Hmm? How many, though, times have we seen people who are hurting and they blame God? Huh? When many times we have been brought uh, the problems on ourselves. Ouch. Hmm? Now, now, now let's get to the guys here on this cross. On both of the sides crosses were men that the Bible called criminals. One gospel calls them thieves and another uses the word for murderer. murderer. Yeah. Do you know these men would do anything to you? We got people out here like this. They will do anything that they can possibly do to you to get what you have. Ouch. But then, look at these words he has. They has. It's the rebellious first. Sounded like the devil. Listen to what he says. <laughs> he says, <laughs> if you are the Christ, These are the, the exact words the enemy used on Jesus in the wilderness. Yes. If you are the Christ, you are. turn these stones into loaves of bread. If you are the Christ, yes. here, here he is hanging on the cross, getting ready to die. If you are, if you are, Jesus. if he knew who he was hanging with, if he knew who he was being ready to die with, he would have just gave himself up. That's right. But think of this. Here is Jesus. And I know Jesus had enough compassion to probably look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And say, what? Do you realize what's getting ready to happen to you? Do you realize what's getting ready to go on? You're getting ready to die. And I have to die for all of everyone. And you telling me if I am the Christ? Boy, you ain't took out no insurance policy today. <laughs> you would have messed up because I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, that's right. I I'm right here. And I, I actually made it so that both of y'all had a chance. I'm dying because I knew right now, right here, right here on Cal are the Christ. Oh, Lord. He's not sorry for what he did. No. He's only sorry that he got caught. Yeah. That's like a lot of us. We just get sorry that we got caught. And then you know how God works? This is how God works. He gets us out of the problem. And guess what we do? We go put ourselves back in how many times do you think they got away with some of the things they were doing? Oh, huh? Lifetime. And it said these were lifetime criminals. They don't know how old. They could have been old men. You don't know how old. They, they could have been bad, bad for a long time. How many times has God saved you from yourself? So many times. Think about it. One time, two times, three times, four times, five Six. Over and over and over again, he has saved you from the ouches. Yes, yes. He has saved you from yourself. Yes, yes. And, and, and many times, even though you got caught, he still got you out. He still saved you. That's right. And here is this man hanging there. He's not getting out. 
this time. If you are the Christ, save us. <laughs> save us. You can do it. Come on. Save us. Still scheming and conniving. And sometimes people just can't change their colors. Sometimes people are who they will show you to be. Isn't that something? Woo. Here is this attitude. I don't need God because I can save myself. The rebelliousness in us chooses to believe in man and not in God. That's how we are. Think about it. Here's a little story for you. Something I learned a long time ago. I did everything I could possibly do, and I'm not going to say names or anything, for a family member of mine. Helped them out. Lifted them up. Said, listen, this is not what you do. Why do you keep doing this? Oh, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do it no more. I'm going to stop. Everything's all right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going to be all right. You know, hey, hey. I said, listen, I have given you every opportunity now. Let's not do this again. Guess what? Doing the same mess, same madness. You know what slowed them up? COVID. I couldn't do it. On that respirator, about ready to die. Come, come, come. I'm about getting ready to get out of here. You still doing the same thing. And then, guess what God does? Brings him out again. And I said, you know, God's not going to just keep on giving you chance after chance, after chance. There's a deadline. Yeah. Yeah. Including me. God. That's right. huh? Including you. Oh, yeah. There's a deadline. Yeah. Because sometimes we push the envelope too many times. I know that's right. And, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> it hurts. And when we keep on pushing and pushing it, and then we get here, it starts to hurt even more because we feel we betrayed God. Oh, yeah. Ooh. No, we have. No, it's this kind of cry that God hears. He hears your cry. Thank you, Lord. And he honors and responds to it over and over and over again. How many times has God saved you? How many times has God said, hey, this is my child? How many times has God said, I got you? Over and over again. Whoever calls, it says, on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, now as I get ready, I'm almost leaving. This is the big picture. This is it. Right now, we are in the same place as these two criminals. Uh, ouch. We can hang on the right, or we can hang on the left. We're going to call the one on the left, <laughs> that one looks at him and says, you know, <laughs> I just need to be with you in paradise. Can you, can you just make a room for me? Huh? Can you just, could you imagine the conversation? Yes. Both, all three in pain. Crucifixion is a horrible death. All three in pain. And now know they're all going to die. Yes. And he says, Lord, Lord, will you remember me? Yes. Lord, Please. still responding. Yes. Still healing. On this first Sunday in May, he's still healing. He is the one sent by God to buy our souls because Jesus didn't deserve to die. 
He paid the price to buy us back from the marketplace of sin to release us from eternal damnation in hell and to purchase us from the world of evil forces. Jesus did this for us. And you know, this is the thing I need you to understand. Your eternal salvation is key. God isn't going to look down on you and say, you know what, you weren't you were just kind of all right. I'm going to put you over here in that kind of all right place. No. Here, I'm going to put you in this, this place over here. It's kind of all right. Sometimes they do wrong. Sometimes they do bad. It's just kind of all right. No, no, no. It's one or the other. Huh? It, it, it's, it's a sign here. You can choose the criminal on the right, or you can choose the criminal on the left. Which one will you choose? Think about it. Will you say, Lord, and look at it and say, I'm a criminal, I'm a murderer, I'm a thief. Hmm? And that's, this is the key that I'm trying to get you to understand. We all are guilty of something. Huh? All of us. You might not be a criminal. You might not be a murderer. You might not even be too bad. But guess what? Too bad is not enough to get you in heaven. Too bad is what God will say. Too bad. You just did. Too bad. The ouch will really hurt then and you will be on ouch, 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 ouch. God cast you away. You have no mansion. You're not going to a half good place. No, you're, not. you're going to hell. Straight to hell. Do you want to go to hell? No. no. I don't. No. No. I don't want to even burn a little bit. You ever get burnt by fire here in this flesh? Yeah. It don't, and it leaves some scars, don't it? Don't, don't. Lord knows. Jesus is in the business of taking lives which have no eternal worth and making them into something beautiful. Amen. When the criminal said, please remember me, <laughs> Jesus' response was, not only will I remember you, <laughs> but today you will be with me in paradise. He, he, he will only remember just not this person, this flesh. He's going to remember your soul. This flesh leaves it. You can't take nothing with you. Nothing. 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 You, you, you got all this stuff. Don't we? I'm a witness. Oh, we got, we got so much stuff. We don't know what to do with it. Yeah, our collection, our collectibles. You know, you collect. Oh, I love to collect. My mom loved to collect elephants. The elephants are still in our house. <laughs> mom gone. Yeah. Hmm? Elephants still there, and, 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 and somebody want to sell them and buy them all. You just buy them, take them. Stuff. We got more stuff. Huh? Your jewelry. Huh? Your cars. Huh? All that stuff you call precious stuff. All this stuff that you say it means so much. You can't take it to heaven with you. There is only one thing you need, and that's your, whoo, your eternal salvation. That's all that's going to matter. Here is the criminal. Huh? He expects you to respond to an offer. He is giving you an offer. He says, uh, this day, I will remember you. <laughs> I don't know who you relate to today, but I want you to think about this. Have you tried to get through life all by yourself and you are just sick and tired of being sick and tired? <laughs> Maybe you have tried everything. Maybe you have searched to fill the emptiness that you have inside. Maybe you have tried to find satisfaction, but it remains out of your grasp. 
Sometimes you just got to fall on your face. And then when you fall on your face and you're down in this valley of depression and sickness, hurt, you say, ouch! Yes. And God says, I hear your cry. This is why I sent my son Jesus down for the two generations. <laughs> this is how it gets, starts getting good. Because all of a sudden, everything he did led to the cross. Healing the sick and the lame, raising the dead, feeding the 5,000. Oh, all he did led to the cross. And then after the cross, when he died, <laughs> they put him in a borrowed tomb. Did you put him in a borrowed tomb? Yeah. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. He didn't own anything. And then he laid there all night Friday, yeah. all night Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> but early. Church, you can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come under your own Christian experience. You can come under watch care. We invite you to come. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank God for you, each and every one of you. We have a 
young lady who always sends money by me. For, she's on uh, dialysis. She's not doing well. Her name is Rena Dickens, and she wants to be on the Watch Care Union Baptist Church. Amen. amen. So we're going to put her on that list. Amen. amen. And we thank God for her. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Sometimes you try everything else, but try God. Try him. He will work it out for you. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. 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 We invite all of you now to go get your wine and your water and your bread and all your visual land and all those who are here. Amen. We ask our two deaconesses to come and deacon... Adams is here. Amen. He will pass out our wine and bread. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, merciful God, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful communion yeah. Sunday. Thank you. We ask you now, Lord, to take these wonderful spiritual gifts that you've given us and let them fall fresh on these wonderful elements. Yeah. We ask you, Lord, to bless this bread. Yes. Turn it from a common use into a spiritual use. Yes. Let it be a blessing to all those who eat it and take of it. Then, Lord, we ask you to bless this wine. Turn it from a common use into a spiritual use. As you said, Lord, this is your blood. And this is in the New Testament, Lord. We thank you for it. Thank you. We ask you, Lord, to bless it, purify it, sanctify it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. And we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins and shortcomings. Please, Lord, Lord, so that we do not eat or drink this bread or take this wine unworthily. Lord, yes. Forgive us. Forgive In Jesus' name, we do pray. And they all said, Amen. 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 You may remove the cloth. Amen. Say thank you, Lord.
to the hollow room where Jesus took the bread and blessed it. And he told his disciples, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And every time you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And they did eat. Then he took the wine and he held it up and he blessed it. And he said, this wine represents my blood and the New Testament till I come again. And every time you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And they did drink. And they went out singing a hymn, praising God for all he's done for us. And we do the same thing here. We pass in our cups and we thank God for all he's done for us. Consider yourselves dismissed in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray. And they all said, Amen. Amen.